So you mentioned how your own practice really helped prepare you to sit and be present with other people's suffering. Can you um, expand on that a little bit more? How, why did you feel it was important to start with yourself first? Well, you know, I didn't really think about that. I didn't really think, oh, I've got to start with myself first. I just, as I was doing this practice, which where we do start with ourselves, I just started noticing my ability to um, actually listen to people and see more in what, kind of see underneath their words a little bit better. So I was able to, I think, really see their humanness and their suffering. And so instead of reacting to their words and what they were saying, I could just sit and hold their experience that they were sharing, which often helped them to just go a little more deeply themselves and surprise themselves at what they saw. And that's what I find these practices really do for people is they help people stop long enough to go underneath their usual perception or their usual reaction and they are surprised at what they see. So it's a real freeing kind of um, experience to, to just see more deeply. So I found that um, that really helps me to be with other people. And of course, like with my family, which is the hardest place in relationships, I still see myself, you know, get so scared that I try to fix what's happening. So it's this lifelong process, I think, of just um, slowly seeing yourself reacting in the same old ways that don't result in what you'd like. And slowly over time, as you keep attending to your own pain, you know, and your own suffering, just slowly over time, as you can become more patient with yourself and more loving and more compassionate, then things drop away and you're able to stay a little bit more, you know, with others' suffering. And so I find that to be really healing for both myself and other people.